It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready. We're about to pump you up live from the greatest city in the world and the city of brotherly love. This is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with the master of the universe, our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and happens to be my father, Big Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. What's shaking on this glorious Mother's Day weekend? You also forgot to mention I'm the husband of your mother. I should have said that. That would have been very appropriate, given the uh, the weekend that's upon us. Well, happy Mother's Day to everyone. I mean, I think they're saying it back, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> a, I heard that, Rye. I heard it. <laughs> so, Bob, there was a recent survey of 22,000 internet users in 17 different countries which gave people the option to choose whether they valued more time versus money. And if you had a guess, when it comes to time and money, who you think value time more? Folks in their 20s and 30s or people in their 60s, if you were a uh, betting man? Well, you know how the baby boom generation thinks, right? That uh, everybody, all the millennials are just uh, fat, dumb, and lazy. <laughs> so I'm going to say it was the millennials because baby boomers care about money and millennials care about time. You actually are dead right. Surprisingly, only 20% of people in their 60s plus clearly had a preference for time over money, where it was more like over 50% for uh, you know, people in their 20s and their 30s. So mm. uh, you're absolutely right. Baby boomers love money more than time. <laughs> Hard to believe. I'm not, sh- Hard to not believe. sure what that says about your generation, but... Uh, the greatest um, generation ever, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, another interesting statistic was, so they also ranked countries internationally what they valued more. It was a time or money. And if you had a guess between the US and China, what country valued time more than money? US. Believe it or not, you're wrong, which I would have oh. thought it was the US as well. But 41% agreed from China that time was more valuable than money, with only 29% in the U.S. valuing time more than money. So, I find it hard uh, to believe, right? I think they're so hard, they're so busy working, they didn't get anybody on the phone. <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about the Oracle of Omaha. Yes, Warren Buffett. He had his big shareholder meeting last Saturday. Bob and I are going to discuss some of the key takeaways that we can take away from the most successful investor of all time. We're going to talk about diversified streams of income. Having a lifetime of income you cannot live is one of the most critical components to building a retirement plan. We're going to discuss how to design an income plan for you. Along with this week's financial pornography, there's a lot of egregious information out there in the financial news. Bob and I are going to tell you what to stay away from. And we have our spotlight segment today. It's an all pain spotlight segment. We have my brother, Bob's son, Chris Payne on the show. And he's going to talk about a real retirement plan he worked on this past week. So you know what not to do, what to do with your retirement planning. So let's hop right to it. Let's talk about the Oracle of Omaha. So Bob. Yes, Ryan. <laughs> last Saturday, as I said, you know, Berkshire Hathaway gathered for the company's annual gathering, what they call the, the Woodstock for Capitalists. I love and we it. had legendary investor Warren Buffett and his uh, partner, Charlie Munger, address a crowd of over 42,000 people. And, and he had a lot of great wisdom, as always, that he espoused during this meeting. So I thought we could talk about some of the, some of the bigger points that Warren made that we can apply to our own investing and finance. And the first one is he talked about inflation, which you and I have talked a lot about on the show. And he has said that long-term bonds are a terrible investment at current rates or anything close to current rates. You know, you have to agree with them, right? I mean, interest rates are at an all-time record low, coming off all-time record lows are gradually starting to go back up. But it doesn't mean that bonds are a bad investment. I mean, a, a bond fund is actually a horrible investment. You know how I feel about that. But, you know, some people get confused when they hear about the Oracle of Omaha, the smartest investor of all time, saying he can eschew bonds to own equities. Well, of course he can. He doesn't need any income. What if you need income? Where are you going to get it? 
Yeah, and that's why I think it's more about picking the right kind of bonds. And if you look at it right now, a lot of money first quarter went into long-term bond funds, which mm. is the exact opposite of what you want to do if you want to create safety, to Warren's point. Because right now, in the Vanguard long-term bond fund is what comes to mind for me, is where a lot of money has gone in the last quarter. And with rates going up, like that could be one of the most risky investments you could be in. Yeah, it's like anything else. It's uh, you can't blame the wrapper, you know, for the underlying investment. So it's, it's, you know, long-term bond fund, not a good idea. The place to be is in the intermediate area, five to seven-year area, you know. And the best thing about a bond is that it's a fixed income investment where you get a fixed rate of return, a fixed date when you get paid, and a fixed day when you get your money back. And that's really the only thing you want to have when you have a bond, don't you think, Roy? I call that the magic bond formula, Bob. So if you don't have the magic bond formula. You need to talk to us. So take a look and see what you own in your portfolio. Another really cool story he told at this shareholder meeting was he talked about trading versus investing. He gave a personal anecdote of the beginning of World War II, and the US actually had a really, really poor start to the war against Japan in the Asia Pacific. And he took advantage of that by buying the markets. And then all of a sudden, he got a small 5% profit and sold out, whereas he had just stayed invested his profit would have been more like fivefold. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that was a great story. And that tells you a lot about being a long-term investor and being patient, which is what he talks about, the difference between him and most investors. But you know what else he talked about, Ryan? He talked about the difference of buying stocks versus gold. He posited that if you had invested $10,000 into an S&P 500 index fund back in 1942 or put the same 10000 in gold, which would have done better? I mean... I'm a professional investor, Bob, so I'm going to have to say stocks did better than gold, clearly. But by how much? That's the real question. Well, here's the great thing about this story. 10000 from 1942 invested in gold turned into 400000 Not bad, huh? No. Hey, it's better than a sharp stick in the eye. <laughs> but how is that versus $51 million you would have had you invested in a basket of S&P 500 stocks back in 1942? So you mean to tell me, about all those commercials to buy gold over the weekend, it's not good advice? Well, no, it's good advice for the people selling gold, but not for our, our listener, not for you. You don't want to invest in gold. You want to be in investments that have the ability to grow, to participate in the growth of the U.S. economy. And uh, oh, by the way, things did work out pretty well after World War II. We did all right. And the country's done very well since then. Oh, yes. We are absolutely, uh, you know, as Warren has said, there's a lot of fits and starts, but uh, the U.S. always moves ahead, which, you know, brings me to one other one that he, he, he talked about was the cryptocurrencies, which is kind oh. of crazy. The market capitalization for cryptocurrencies right now is bigger than Apple and Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's company combined. And he made a great point, kind of like gold. Anytime you're buying a non productive asset, meaning it doesn't generate any income like gold, you're only hoping in the future someone's going to buy it at a higher price. And he equated that, Bob, to owning a stamp collection and hoping that in the future, people are going to want to buy your stamps for more money. So I thought a you beautiful know, analogy. You know, Rob, we have a name for that. It's called the greater fool theory. You know, you buy something and the only hope you have is some fool greater than you will pay a higher price. <laughs> you know, that wasn't the first time that's happened, though. We've had other speculative bubbles. The biggest one ever, actually the first one ever, was with tulip bulbs. Do you remember that? I don't because I think that was in the 1600s, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yes. In the 1600s, you could actually, one tulip bulb, you could exchange for somebody's entire estate at the top. Now, at the bottom, the same tulip bulb was worth the same price as an onion. <laughs> so you talk about a speculative pop. People were trading tulip bulbs back in the yeah. 1600s for the first big bubble. No different today with Bitcoin. And by the way, do you know what Warren Buffett called Bitcoin? What do you call it, Bob? <laughs> Rat poison squared. <laughs> and that was polite <laughs> compared to what Charlie Munger said. I'm not even going to tell you what Charlie Munger said. <laughs> okay. um, if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need a real plan that's not about speculation. I need to know what I own in my portfolio. Do I own bond funds? That could be a very, very dangerous place to be if rates go up. Here's your shot to get a full analysis. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run for you our total financial master plan. We'll do it with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review. So if you bring in all those statements, just put them in a brown paper bag. We'll sort through everything here in the office. We'll build you a personalized portal and we'll do a full portfolio analysis x-ray 
on your portfolio. We're going to look at what you own in your portfolio. What is the income on your portfolio? Can we increase the cash flow in your portfolio so that we can bring in your income gap? We're going to look at diversification. How properly diversified are you? What do you own in your portfolio? Do you own bond funds? Is your money concentrated? Are you protected against the next market downturn? We're going to show you what pitfalls are in your portfolio. And we're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden fees in portfolios, a lot of high cost annuities, mutual funds, private placements, real estate investments. We're going to break down all the costs in your portfolio, help you bring down the fees. And finally, we're going to do is we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, utilizing strategies we have literally worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All that has to happen is you call or text 844 752 6692. That's 844 752 6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you've saved over 200,000 for your personal retirement, our team will run for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost, but there's no plan unless you text us or call us today at 844 752 6692. That's 844 752 6692. This is Bob. I'm with my son, Rye. We're the pains of no pain, no gain at Andrew Radio. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain market update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning. This is Bob Payne, Chief Investment Officer of Payne Capital Management. And the global markets rallied this week, matching its longest winning streak since October of last year. Now, the Dow, the S&P, and most global markets are now in positive territory for the year, while small company growth stocks are leading the pack and made an all-time record high this week, now up over 340% since the bottom in 2009. Now, the strength in small company stocks may have come as a result of the resurgence in the dollar. History has shown that small company stocks outperform large cap stocks during periods of sustained dollar strength. Now, Larry Kudlow, former economic commentator on television, is now the director of the National Economic Council in D.C., and he's always been a proponent of what he calls king dollar, and perhaps that recent strength in the dollar is the result of his influence. Well, we'll see. Meanwhile, there are a number of factors that helped the markets higher this week. Inflation concerns dissipated when the CPI reading, the Consumer Price Index, came in below analyst expectations. And as a result, the 10-year Treasury yield moved below 3%. First quarter earnings have continued to be spectacular, with 90% of the S&P companies reporting 79% delivered earnings results better than expected. Now, in spite of these results, there's some investors out there worried about, well, this quarter's results may be as good as it gets. Well, on the other hand, many analysts are now making the case that not only is it not as good as it gets, but second quarter earnings may be equally good or even better. Now, oil hit the highest price since November of 2014, trading above $71 a barrel, pushing oil stocks higher and helping commodities now outperform the Dow and the S&P year to date. Now, Wall Street's fear gauge, the SIBO Volatility Index, or the VIX, as is popularly known, dropped this week and has now erased the massive spike it experienced in February, reflecting more optimism on the part of investors. And lastly, the fear of trade war subsided when on Thursday, reports suggested some optimism was forming that Beijing and Washington could resolve their trade war differences. Now, as I stated on this call many times over the past year, there's always concerns, but concerns are not certainty, but they're necessary to create the short-term buying opportunities for long-term investors like you. Remember, all dips in the market in history were temporary and new highs inevitable, especially in this big, booming bull market. Now, if you're sitting there wondering, do I have a portfolio built to win in this big, booming bull market? Why sit there and wonder when you could know? Give us a call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Drinking your hand and your toes in the sand. 
Now that's a very cool way to work on your retirement planning. And that is just what you can do with Payne Capital Management, as they also have offices in North and South Florida. So stop in and see them when you're on vacation and tell them Ron sent you. This is no pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I are simple men. And we want to keep it simple for you. We want to give you practical, common sense advice that you can use for your planning and investing. And that's why we put together our latest video course, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income. You cannot outlive and you can download that for free. Simply text the word bullish, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555 555- 888. You can get our course. It's just a nice baseline to get you started with the retirement planning process. Check it out. What you need to know about creating income you cannot outlive. Simple three-part course. You can simply download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. So Bob, when you and I talk about retirement planning, you know one thing we mention on the show all the time at nauseum is filling in your income gap. You know, and just in plain English for the folks out there, what the heck is your income gap? Well, it's simply when you stop working, the income that you were using to live on from your wages, your after-tax salary or income, is no longer coming in. It's that simple. You're retired now. Of course, I don't know what that's about because I was told by. I think you and your brother, that I'm never able to retire. And and we'll we'll talk about that later. But nonetheless, that's what the income gap is, right? You need income to live on because last I checked, you can't buy lunch with relative performance. You need to pay cash. And that cash has got to come from sound investment strategies. Yeah. And I think the one mistake that we see and the one position you don't want to be in retirement is hoping every year that the market goes up so you can live off that growth. And you and I know you know, markets are very unreliable and what the market's going to do, never mind over a year, even over a day to day or two years, whatever, you know, markets, we don't really know what the market's going to do, you know, on a regular basis. So it's very hard to rely on that in retirement to your point, Bob, because you can't live on relative performance when you need income to actually spend. You know, it blows my mind, right? Every time we sit down with someone, we see that they have enough money where if they just put it into a good fixed income portfolio, a good chunk of it, they're going to be able to fill that income gap and still have growth and appreciation to overcome inflation and to uh, live a lifestyle, you know, beyond anything they could have imagined. I mean, the number one investor characteristic is you take way too much risk in your portfolio. In other words, you take more risk than necessary to achieve your goals, especially that income gap. And if that's filled, you never have anything to worry about. Yeah, exactly. If you can create enough current income that you never have to chew into your principal, that's kind of like the magic formula. And that's the thing, Bob, like we see all the time, a lot of times your portfolio looks the same way it did 10 years ago. And remember what happened 10 years ago when the market corrected, you know, a lot of times maybe you had to go back to work or maybe, you know, you're not, your financial future became a lot less secure than it was before that. Well, now it's 10 years later. And if you still have what we call wealth accumulation or growth portfolio, the same thing can happen again. And that's why you have to start thinking about converting your portfolio to what we call Bob, a wealth distribution portfolio, where you have current income that could fill that income gap. That's a great point, Rye. But more importantly, you want to be certain that the income is coming from non-correlated assets. So Bob, let's say that in English. Non- what the heck does non-correlated assets mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's income from non-correlated assets. So for example, you want to have investments that don't necessarily move together. Uh, yes. Sometimes real estate goes up while stocks and bonds go down or bonds go down while stocks go up. You want to have it coming from a variety of investment classes because you know sometimes if you have everything in short-term CDs, for example, you're never going to have enough income to live on. So you want to have things where income can actually go up. What are some examples of income that can go up, right? I mean, if you look at a, at a basic portfolio, if you want to build it for retirement, you, know, you want to have a lot of the core investments in there. You want to have domestic stocks like we talk about, international mm-hmm. stocks, which pay higher cash flow right now. Things like real estate in your portfolio, real estate investment trusts, and MLPs as well, which pay a very, very high cash flow right now. So having it from a lot of different sources like that, can really create a nice stream of income in retirement, where to your point, Bob, you're not betting the house or the farm on just one asset class or one investment. Yeah, that's a spectacular point, Rye, because you can get four to five percent in some alternative investments as opposed to, you know, less than a half of one percent from a growth investment. So you really do need to diversify your stock portfolio, not just by appreciation and asset class, but also by income generating class. 
Yeah, and I think you can also get into the other the other realm of buying investments that have really, really high income, but they're very, very risky. Your famous Bobism, Bob, is uh, more money was lost uh, chasing yield than at the point of a gun. What do you mean by that? Well, it's very simply that uh, when you reach for yield, you know, sometimes when you have an investment that's paying an extraordinarily high rate of return, it doesn't mean it's safe. I mean, here's the rule of thumb, and I think you could all live by this. If you have an investment where the yield is higher than your hat size, you've got a risky investment. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's a great we're all, thumb. <laughs> hey, like, hey, let's face it, you know, when you're investing, you're lending money to some institution. And if you go out and borrow on a mortgage of 4.5% and then somebody has to pay you 13% in an investment, guess what? No one's willing to lend them money at 4.5%. Why would you borrow at 13 if you could borrow at 4? So whenever you see a, an outside yield, don't reach for it because – when they cut you off, they're not just going to cut you off at the fingers. They're going to cut you off at the elbow. <laughs> yeah. And I think I think another way of saying that too is just, if it sounds too good to be true when it comes to investing, it probably is. <laughs> it's yeah. that simple. Uh, the other day I was listening to radio and there was somebody advertising a program that generates a 5% a week return. Then it's a passive strategy. <laughs> <laughs> I you know I, I don't do that too. A lot of these, and I hate to pick on annuities, but I love to pick on annuities. Is a lot of times they'll advertise they're giving you a guaranteed seven percent. Well, mm-hmm. it's not a real seven percent, and it would yeah. take me you know another thirty minutes to explain on the show why it's not. But just understand that if you've been pitched something like that, or you have that in your portfolio, you need to have it analyzed because there's no such thing right now as a guaranteed seven percent. There's a lot of fine print there, and your return is nowhere near that when you actually break down what some of these investments entail. There's no rule of thumb because I know I know you well, Ry. You don't like rules of thumb. But almost every annuity that we've analyzed, the return to the investor has been somewhere between 1% and 2%. That's not pretty, Bob. No, it's not pretty. And if you're wondering if your portfolio looks pretty, why sit there and wonder when you could know? If you're one of the next 10 callers and you've saved at least 200000 for retirement, Ryan and I will figure it out for you. Not only that, we're going to create for you your own 360 financial portal, which will look at every aspect of your financial life. How would you rate yourself in terms of being financially organized? I find most people on a scale of one to 10 or a two. If you want to be a 10, you want to be one of the next 10 callers because we're going to create for you your own total financial master plan. We're going to look at your taxes. We're going to look at your estate plan. We're going to look at all of your investment statements. Now, we don't want you to do a lot of work. Just grab those documents, stick it in a shopping bag, bring it over to the office. We'll do a full analysis at no cost to make sure that you are invested properly, that your estate plan is not an IOU to the IRS. We're going to take your entire investment portfolio and break it down into our patent analysis to look at the three key elements of a successful portfolio. We're going to look at diversification. Are you diversified across asset classes or within asset classes? Are you in an investment that's about to go into a bubble? Let's make sure we learn from the lessons of the past. We're going to look at your cost. You know, as much as the fees are supposed to be transparent today, there's still tons of hidden costs. And we don't want to see you be overcharged on your investments. Our spreadsheet will break down every cost in your portfolio, including those hidden costs buried deep into the prospectus of that mutual fund or into that insurance contract. And lastly, we want to fill that income gap. We want to be certain that you have the cash flow you need to achieve your retirement goals. We're going to look at every aspect of your portfolio and create a more dependable income stream with appreciation so you can net out of inflation and taxation and achieve those wonderful financial goals. And finally, we're going to tie it all together into one customized total financial master plan, utilizing strategies that my son and I have been perfecting now for over 40 years. That's right. We've been working for four decades, helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So don't waste time. Call or text now at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. Nine two. Get the full holistic review if you have over 200000 safe for retirement. Be one of the next 10 callers or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. It's a full holistic financial review at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain. 
Financial Radio. It's time for Financial Pornography of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making ill-advised financial decisions. So, Bob, what did you find out there this week in the world of financial pornography? Well, first of all, did you know that um, oil hit $77 a barrel this week? It's crazy. I mean, given the fact that if you go back a couple months ago, the mantra was lower for longer when oil was in the 50s. And every expert on Wall Street predicted that oil was going to stay in the 50s. And clearly it has not. Caught them completely off guard. They were absolutely missed the boat on forecasting oil prices. Matter of fact, they said that the average price would be about $57 a barrel. And here we are at $77 a barrel, 12% higher than they thought. And you know, the thing is, this is what financial pornography is about. Their reason for missing what might've been obvious to a lot of people was, uh, oh, there was unanticipated supply disruptions or OPEC made different policy decisions or the weather, or they just don't have good data outside the U.S., when it comes to all markets, this really applies. So people who make these forecasts and act like they know, it's impossible to know. How do you predict the weather? I mean, our, our weather guy on TV can't even tell you when it's raining out, let alone make predictions about what the weather's going to be in the future. But these analysts are the same way. You can't invest anticipating what these analysts believe is going to happen because they're, they're not sometimes wrong. They're almost always wrong. That's the scary part. I mean, they're they're usually wrong altogether at the same time. And that's usually most of the time. <laughs> so it's, uh, why do they pay these researchers millions of dollars a year? And as Warren Buffett once said, stock analysts make fortune tellers look good. I mean, it's like you probably have a better time using astrology to pick what's going to happen next in the markets. Well, it's so true, right? Because even if you could guess at all these variables, you might not even interpret them correctly. So it's so complex. And that's the thing that I really like to bring home on this segment is that financial markets are very, very complex. To predict things short term, it's not humanly possible. It's not even possible for artificial intelligence. What we do know, and this is something that we report to our clients almost uh, every quarter, is how much oil is being used and how much is being produced and the consumption of oil has gone up every year for the last five years, and it's projected to continue to go up. If you have more people using oil, what's going to happen to the price, right? Bob, I'm not a rocket scientist, but I'm, I'm going to think it's going to go up. More demand means higher prices. And there's going to be more people, right? We're at, uh, yeah. at 7.6 billion people on the planet on our way to 8 billion. And the more people we have, the more commodities are going to be used. Well, that's a good point about commodities too. And this is something you and I have been talking about a lot lately on the show is Mm -hmm. the portfolio that you had in place the last 10 years probably isn't going to work the next 10 years because the dynamics around the world have changed a lot, right? We went from inflation going down. Remember, you you might be able to refinance your mortgage at a lower rate. And also the US was the only place growing. And Bob, those dynamics have shifted dramatically over the course of the last 12 to 24 months. They really have, Ryan. And and you're in an economy of $74 trillion. The global GDP is $74 trillion today. And there's more people than ever in the history of the planet. There's more business being done than ever in the history of the planet. And, you know, inflation is is a fact of life and inflation is coming back. And interest rates are going up as a result of it. And the price of commodities are going up. One of the best performing asset classes this year has been a basket of commodities. Yeah, and that's why it's so important to have what we call your basis covered. We're in synchronized global growth around the world, and we have inflation kicking in. You got to have the right things in your portfolio. And to your point, Bob, commodities are an inflation hedge. And that's certainly something that you want to consider for your portfolios, along with being more global now, because it, like, is your point, I mean, it's just we haven't seen conditions like this in a long time where everyone around the globe is growing at the same time. Well, you know, the best line that I read from these forecasters, Rye, was that They would have had it right, except for the unexpected events that occurred. You know why events are unexpected? (laughs) Because they're unexpected, Bob. Absolutely, buddy. Absolutely. Uh, So what did you find out in the world of financial pornography this week? Well, I guess since we're torturing stock analysts today, we might as well keep on that theme. You know, kind of in the same vein as oil, I think Facebook stock is a great example of analysts don't know what they're talking about because 
If you remember, there was a big data breach with Facebook stock about a month ago, and the stock plummeted, right? It hit a high of you know, close to $200 a share. And then come April, spiraled all the way down to somewhere around like $100, $153 a share. And of course, when the stock started going down and it plummeted, every analyst on Wall Street started putting sell ratings on the stock, which is not that a little counterintuitive, Bob, that you would sell when the price is going down? Yeah, that's a problem, right? You know, people make projections based on their most recent experience. And analysts are just average normal human beings like everyone else. While the stock was hitting all-time record highs, they had a buy. As soon as you have a 10, 20% correction, they panic like everyone else. Um, and now- Seen it happen over and over again. And now the stock's up uh, over $180 a share. So it's almost rebounded all of what it lost in one month. So it's, uh, you know, what I like to say is analysts love and are very good at playing money morning quarterback. Yeah, they really are. And it's, um, you know, you can't really go by one opinion. And you, you got to be patient, just like we talked about Warren Buffett earlier. Only investors that are successful are long term investors, long term thinkers. If you like Facebook, you want to own it for a long time. But even so, that's a speculation in my mind. You still want to be in a diversified portfolio and not speculate on the movement of individual stocks, especially based on what some analyst has to say. Yeah, exactly right. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need a real plan that's based on my goals, not what the analysts on Wall Street are saying, here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers, we keep 10 slots open. You have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Myself and Bob will run for you our famous total financial master plan. It's a full holistic review where we look at everything. If you're bringing that tax return that was just done a month ago, we have a CPA partner that'll review it to make sure you're not paying unnecessary taxes. If you dust off that will in the basement, we'll have our estate planner review that to make sure that your estate plan is up to date. And if you just take all those statements, just throw them in a folder, throw them in a bag, bring them in the office. We'll sort through everything and we'll build you your own personalized portal so you can get a bird's eye view of your wealth and we'll do a full x-ray of your portfolio. We'll look at all the critical components. We'll look at income. Income is so critical for retirement. Can we increase or optimize the income on your portfolio to fill in that income gap? We're going to look at diversification. What risks do you have in your portfolio? Is your portfolio set up for the next 10 years, not the last 10 years? Is your portfolio bulletproof against the next market downturn? And we're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden costs in portfolios, especially those insurance products, mutual funds, brokerage products. We're going to break down all the hidden costs so you know what you're really paying on your portfolio and help you reduce cost. And then finally, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan. And we're going to determine the age-old question, are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now, our family has worked on for literally over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. The time to call us is right now at 844-752-6692. You could text or call 844-752-6692. We have a few slots left if you're one of the next few callers and you've saved over 200000 for your retirement. Ryan and I will run for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation. There's no cost. There's no strings attached. But you have to call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob. I'm with Rye. We're the pains of no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. Ready for what Bob and Ryan have to say next? All right, everyone, gird your loins. Let's find out. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio, and Bob and I want to give you common sense advice you can use in your portfolio, and that's why we put together our latest video course, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income You Cannot Outlive. It's an easy baseline to get started with retirement planning. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555-888. That's the word bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. It's a simple three-part course. Just get you started in the retirement planning process. What you need to know about creating an income you cannot outlive, check it out for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. 
And if you want to learn more about myself and Bob, you can do that on the World Wide Web. Simply go to bebullish.com. And yes, Bob's hair is real. Check for yourself. You can go to bebullish.com. You can subscribe to the show, learn a little more about what we do at Pain Capital Management. And if you ever have a burning question you want to ask myself or Bob, you can always email us, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. And it's a great question. We'll answer it right here on the show. And to help us do that this morning, I failed this morning to introduce our engineer. We got Mark Haywood with us this morning as well. How you doing, Mark? Good morning, gentlemen. Good to be with you as always. Guardian angel on our shoulder, Rye. Every show. Mark makes it sound smooth. Somebody's got to <laughs> clean up the mess, right? That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much, man. Pretty much. So what... Uh, what came in the electronic mailbag this morning uh, that Bob and I can answer? Yes, all the way from the interwebs this morning. <laughs> We've got Helen in Ardmore, Pennsylvania. Helen says, Bob, this one's to you, Bob. She says, my dad just died a couple of weeks ago. What should I be doing to make sure that my mom is okay financially? Oh, that's a sweet question. That is. Thank you, Mark. And, you know, Helen, hopefully your dad was financially organized, but what we find is most people aren't. So it's great that your mom, you know, has you to help out. We get this call every week anymore, it seems like, you know, to help people, you know, transition from the spouse who handled all the finances to, in this case, the spouse who doesn't know where anything is. So I guess, where would you start, right? Yeah. Or, you know, a lot of times like the heirs in this case too, where, it, where a lot of things we put in your lap. And I think, you know, this is why we are a real big advocate of putting together a financial portal, you know, using technology to your benefit where it's like, hey, if you can have everything in one place, so God forbid something happens to you, it's one login, one password, you can see where all the assets are and keep all the important docs in one place. That's so much better than having the, the file cabinet in the basement. Maybe you have some other things hidden in the closet. You know, I had a real case like that, Bob, recently with a client of ours where that's what the son and the mother had to do because the husband had a stroke and they didn't know where anything was. Well, that's the nice thing about the portal. It has your own vault where you can put your will and your trust and your deeds and everything else that you need. And unfortunately, the non-financial spouse is never interested until they have to be interested. We just sat down with a, a client the other day and I said, let's put your will up in your vault. And he said, well, I will when I have one. And he's got a, it, unfortunately, as a spouse that's mentally ill, he doesn't have trust drawn up, doesn't have a will drawn up. And because we introduced him to our 360 financial portal, he's at the attorney's office this week getting it all done. But in this case, with Helen, you know, first thing you want to do is make sure you call the insurance company to look at any life insurance policies to make sure the death benefits get paid out. But, you know, the next very next call should be to Social Security, don't you think, Ryan? Yeah, absolutely. And again, this is where a lot of handholding can help because I don't know if you've ever called that Social Security line, Bob. It's not pretty. They're actually getting better. You know, I'm, I'm surprised. Their their website's better. And uh, the last few times that I've been on the phone with them, they've they've really have improved their customer service. But uh, again, corrected. there's always exceptions. <laughs> uh, a lot of times, Helen's mom will be entitled to a bigger Social Security benefit. And you want to call and, and, and check that out because she might be entitled to her husband's benefit. You won't know unless you call. You know, they're not necessarily going to call you. And another thing I, I think you want to check are, are your pensions. If your dad had any pensions... Uh, a lot of times there's a spousal benefits and uh, you still got a call. You know, I started a pension this year, Rye. How about that? I'll tell you what, Bob, the road to riches is here. You're uh, you're set. You can finally <laughs> I retire. Surprised, though, when I called, they had the wrong phone number. They had the wrong address. They had your, your, <laughs> me marrying your mom the wrong year. I doubt if I didn't call, they would have remembered to send me the check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all these things need to be figured out. And I mean, it's the better to do it proactively, not reactively when, God forbid, there's a someone passes away. So we always urge, get on top of getting everything together. And with technology now, like our 360 portal, you can mm -hmm. do those type of things. If they were fortunate enough to have a financial plan, if they're working with a fiduciary like us, now that plan's got to be tweaked, right? You don't have as much in terms of expenses. They're not necessarily going to go down a lot, but that portfolio strategy may not have to be as aggressive, or it may need to generate more income. Once you make those phone calls, Helen, you know, what she should really do is sit down with a fiduciary and get a formal plan and then get all those documents in electronically into something like our 360 financial portal so we don't have that issue ever again. So what else did you find there in the mailbox? Thanks for that question, Helen. And Ryan, if there's a lesson to be learned here, it's take care of mom and make sure you get in on Bob's estate plan. <laughs> well said. Well said on Mother's Day weekend. 
Next question comes to us from Martin in Livingston, New Jersey. Martin says, Ryan, because of some past medical issues, I've been told that I won't be able to get long-term care insurance. Do I need to figure out how to self-insure? That's interesting, Martin. My parents have actually been in the same situation recently and are trying to figure out what to do. Yeah, there's different insurance policies you may still want to buy, but I always say the first thing you want to do is figure out if you can self-insure because as you get older, especially into your 60s, a lot of these insurance policies, even if you're insurable, become very cost prohibitive. So I think you need to just figure out first off, and this is why I like when we do a lot of the modeling out, Bob, is just looking at you know what would happen if, say, a quarter of a million dollars you know, left your portfolio for medical costs. You know what would happen to your lifestyle? In a lot of cases, people are going to crash and burn in that scenario, right? So it's so, so important to plan. And I find that most plans that you do online they don't incorporate you know what if scenarios. They don't tell you what would happen if you had a catastrophic illness for you or your spouse. So it's so important to have someone who can plan that properly. Yeah, just out of curiosity, Mark, did your your parents? come up with a solution yet? Or are they still trying to figure that out? They're still in the process. They're actually looking at other types of insurance instead in place of long-term care insurance. Yeah. I think first and foremost, figure out, do you need the insurance? And if you do, like you said, there's some alternative policies you can look at. That's right. And what they're figuring out is that, like we're saying, you have to be careful when you look into insurance in general. Well, I've seen a lot of these long-term care policies where they you know, arbitrarily increase the premium or in some companies just flat out just quit the business. I mean, it's a risky venture investing in a long-term care policy I've seen in the past. I mean, a lot of companies have just gotten out of it completely because people are living longer and medical advancements are allowing us all to live longer. And actuarially, we're all going to live longer. So it's really an issue and it's something that you absolutely need to address. I would like you to ask yourself a question. On a scale of one to 10, how financially organized are you? Now, I'd like to ask another question. On a scale of one to 10, how financially organized would you like to be? Now, I'm sure you'd want to be a 10. Who wouldn't? And if you'd like to be a 10, we'd like to offer, if you're one of the next few callers, you've saved at least $200,000 for retirement. Ryan and I will run for you our renowned Total Financial Master Plan, and we'll introduce you to our 360 financial portal. This will give you the ability to get financially organized, to have all of your documents in one place, to have all your goals measured on a daily basis, how well you're progressing toward those goals, and when you've achieved those goals. We're going to have you review all of your financial situations. We're going to look at your taxes. We're going to look at your estate plan. We want to be certain that your wills and trusts are not an IOU to the IRS. And most importantly, we want you to put all of your financial statements in a shopping bag, pick up the phone, give us a text, come on over, let us do a free analysis to make sure that your portfolio contains the three critical elements of success diversification, cost, and income. Believe it or not, most are taking more risk than necessary to achieve their goals. You can reduce your risk with a properly diversified portfolio by diversifying that portfolio across asset classes and within asset classes. We're gonna look at your fees. We wanna make certain that you're not overcharging yourself by diversifying your portfolio by custodian. There's so many investments that have hidden fees buried deep into the prospectus of that mutual fund that you own or into the contract of that insurance annuity. And income, we talk about the income gap every week. We help people fill that income gap by making certain they have a portfolio where the cash flow is going to achieve the retirement income goals on an annual basis. And finally, we're gonna tie it all together into one customized total financial master plan, utilizing strategies that my family has been perfecting for over 40 years. That's right, for over four decades, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B. That's your goals, your dreams with your values, with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So don't waste time. Call or text now at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. We still have a couple slots left. If you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, call or text us at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. Get a full holistic review at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. Nine two. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. Hey, 
Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I want to make sure that you've got the most common sense advice with your planning and investing. And that's why we put together our latest video guide, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income You Cannot Outlive. It gives you a baseline on what to do. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH to 555 888-888. 888. It's a simple three-part series. We'll just break down the basics just to get you started. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And now it's time for my favorite part of the show, and hopefully yours too. And we have a very special guest to help with my favorite part of the show. We've got Chris Payne, my brother, Bob's son, to do the spotlight segment where we actually go through and dissect a real financial plan. Chris, how are you, man? It's great to spend Hi. this Mother's Day weekend with you and dad and mom. Doing great. Thanks for asking. If I were any better, I would be dad. <laughs> <laughs> but your mom's very excited that the two of you are here visiting her on Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day, Chris. <laughs> happy Mother's Day, dad. Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right, buddy. Um, what do you got for us? I have a really interesting case this week, actually. So this is interesting for a couple different reasons. All so right. this couple had a really successful corporate career early on in their lives, and they saved a lot of money. And then kind of midstream, they decided to change careers for a substantially less income. They were able to support their lifestyle, but the big thing was that they weren't really able, able to save anything additional. Mm-hmm. So what that really led to was they thought that they needed to take a lot more risk in their portfolio because for the entire time, they'd never done a financial plan, and they really were always kind of in that catch-up mode. So from their standpoint, they thought they had to take a lot more risk for the possibility of getting way more return long term. So what happened to their portfolio in 2008? In 2008 they were down over 44% dad. Oof. A lot. And that's the thing, I mean we talked about this a lot on the show today, just how much more reliable cash flow is than appreciation in the stock market because any year you could have one of those big declines and it sounds like this couple is pretty closer in, you know, to retirement where they can't afford that kind of uh, setback. Well, I don't know yeah, anybody right. that can afford that guy set back. <laughs> yeah, right. You're absolutely right. I think the key really here is the I word, and that's income. So what we did was we actually sat down, and we went through their entire financial plan. And here's what we found out. We found out between their Social Security, the pension that he's going to get at retirement, and plus what we're able to increase in the portfolio from an income standpoint, which is about $7,000 a year. Yeah. He's actually going to have the same amount of money that he's making today and not really have to touch principal at any point in time in the next 30 to 40 years. Hmm. And what I love about that is, just to chime in here, is just you're still giving them liquidity. Because I think the one thing with a lot of these investments that you can have for retirement, you always have to give something up, right? With a lot of these annuity products, you have to give up your principal to get an income. Here, their principal is still in their portfolio. It's still theirs to use and hopefully have some growth over time. I think that is just like a very, very key point. I yeah, see that absolutely. happening so often. It's not broken. Let's not fix it. Well, it's it's too late to fix it after it drops 40%. So when, as you get older, you have to be more conservative and you need this type of analysis to see that you don't have to take as much risk as most people do. And the biggest mistake you can make with your portfolio is to take more risk than necessary to achieve your financial goal, especially since we all have that income gap when we hang up our spurs and go out into retirement. Yeah. With that being said, I say income first, growth second. (laughs) Well, you have to have growth first if you're young, Chris. So you and Rye, you can have all the growth you need. I, on the other hand, I need income. So because I'm going to retire soon is what I heard. (laughs) Well, Bob, while you may not be young, you're still handsome. Thank you. I appreciate that, Chris. You know, you get your looks from me and your brains from your mother. So, Chris, they weren't dinks. Remember, back in back in the 70s and 80s, we used to talk about dual incomes, no kids, but they have a child. Uh, how prepared are they for education? Well, they've done some savings for their child, but they're really going to have a shortfall unless they, they're able to do some additional savings. But what we were able to find out was that if they continued to even take some of the money that they saved up and start moving it over to like a 529 plan, by the time their daughter's ready to go to school, they're going to be fully funded. You know, what I love about the 529 plan is that it grows tax-free, and all you have to do is use it for educational expenses. And, you know, I found that a lot of folks will ask me, well, what happens if they don't go to school? Well, who doesn't go to school? I mean, if you don't go to college, you can go to vocational school, you can go to any type of school, there's all types of educational expenses. And I think it's great if you just continue your education and there's always some expense that you can apply that 529 
portfolio to some form of an educational expense. So I think it's something that everyone should do for their children and their grandchildren. And I think it was a great recommendation on your part here, Chris, to help them meet the educational goals for their child. Well, thanks, Dad. I really appreciate that. Um, you know, the one thing I would say, too, is if they're, they don't think their child's going to be going to college, it can always be passed on to another family member. So it's not restricted to that particular person. And that's great for grandkids as well. So if you have grandkids that you want to start putting money away for it, and you don't know which one's going to be getting a scholarship or who may or may not go to college, like you said, but that money is transferable, which can be a very valuable thing to utilize when it comes to gifting for your kids or your grandkids for education. You know, the educational costs have gone up double inflation since I've been a financial advisor. So over 43 years, it's continued to accelerate in cost. And I've been saying every year that this can't continue. Every parent I sit down with says, oh, this can't continue, but it does. I mean, Brian, when I went to uh, school in Philadelphia, it was about 12000 a year. When you went and Chris, you went to school, it was about 30000 a year. For those same schools, it's close to 70000 a year now. It's insane. It's insane. It really is. I mean, somehow it's got to end. But, you know, just in case it doesn't, you really need to help your children and your grandchildren start funding these 529 plans. And I think that instead of giving all these toys to kids, that they had so much stuff, Start giving them checks. Start putting it into 529. It's probably the best gift you can ever give someone, the gift of an education. Absolutely. Not to mention that they've raised the gifting amount this year to 15000 a person. So there's another benefit. Is that why Ryan was calling me? <laughs> <laughs> That's why we came to the shore this I would weekend. never. I would never. Well, great job in this case, Chris. Um, again, it's all about the holistic planning creating that income you can't outlive, making sure that you're doing everything in the most tax-efficient way, whether it's educating your children, grandchildren. And if you're thinking to yourself, I need a full holistic plan just like this, here's your shot to do it. We still have a few slots left. If you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, myself, Chris, and Bob will run for you our famous pain total financial master plan. And we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full review where we'll look at everything just like this couple. If you bring in all your statements, just put them in a bag, put them in a folder. We'll go through everything for you. We'll build you your own personalized portal so we can take a bird's eye view and see what's really going on. We'll do a full x-ray of your portfolio. We're going to look at income. We're able to increase the income on this portfolio by over $8,000 a year to fill in that income gap. Can we help you fill in your income gap by optimizing the income on your portfolio? We're going to look at fees. There's lots of hidden costs in portfolios, a lot of those annuities, mutual funds, brokerage products. We're going to break down all the fees and show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in the portfolio? What pitfalls lie ahead? We're going to help you bulletproof your portfolio for retirement. Then we're going to tie it all together and we're going to determine that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now our family has worked on for literally 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. We only have a few spots left, so don't miss out. Give us a call or text 844 844- 752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers and you've saved over 200000 for your retirement, my family will run for you your own total financial masterpiece. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost, but there's no plan unless you text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Well, another great show and another great all pain family uh, get together at the shore here this weekend to celebrate moms, uh, celebrate Mother's Day rather. Chris, great having you, man. Right, it's always a pleasure. And I agree. If we're doing any better, we'd be Bob. No greater joy in life than working with the pain boys. <laughs> well, have a great Mother's Day weekend, and as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.